I would be interested to know that we predict when you sit down to work again with that data, whether you've, there's been a shift in the way that you approach the data having gone through that theatrical experience, having tried to, um, to as you said at the beginning, I'm not very good at putting my head, self into someone yeah. else's head, and he said, great, even better, <laughs> let's see how it goes, and, and you avoid him. Mm. I think I need to do like, uh, if I went back to the data, I'd probably find that out if I go over to it again to see how my interpretation might have changed, I guess. Yeah. And that's, in itself, is quite an interesting concept in terms of how your methodology can be dynamic like that, as well as your interpretation. Mm. It's constantly changing. Now I've got an interesting point, but I think it's an interesting question because <laughs> I've created it. What would Arnie do if he saw what we'd actually produce? He did chat over. He did chat over. Would he recognise himself? Uh, yeah, an element. You think? Um, and what was happening? He's the only guy that's met. of the picture as well. The beauty yeah. of using the arts is that we're, we're, we're allowing people to make their own decisions. Often, I think, yes. it's very hard for us to resist as practitioners putting in a didactic element, and we w will often push up an agenda, but it's the audience's prerogative to, to do what, what they will. But from, I've just got one other, one other point yeah, linked to that, is that Although to bring theatre into research may feel new, actually theatre is, and, and this goes to reality, as far as reality TV, theatre is now bringing in a lot more research. So there's a lot of theatre which is validated because it's based on testimonials, like the Stephen Lawrence case, and this week on, on one of the Radio 4 weekly plays, it is just transcripts of interviews with dementia. Um, patients. Or live TV. Or live TV. So these two things are coming, that it's all, it's all coming. Out. I think that kind of resonates. I was going to say, like, um, that which you were saying, um, talking about almost like validating the data through, um, I think it seems to resonate quite a lot. I'm not sure, create, like, the F, some, some qualitative stuff in ethnographies, um, where people that want to validate certain parts of um, an observation or a set of focus groups or uh, like a ethnography they go they sh take their they keep rehashing their interpretation back with the original source yeah, so yeah. it's an engagement with that participant group so much so that you become very much intertwined it's just a it's a dialogue between yourselves and the people that you are traditionally studying. I came across a really interesting group of researchers in Queensland in Australia yeah. and they, they were placed in the back of this conference somewhere and they were a group of, uh, what were they, they were queer Queensland, they were a gay... Uh, yeah, that was their label, not yeah. the one we <laughs> They were a gay interest group, okay. And their piece of research was called Dinner Parties and Cabarets. Mm. 
And they had dinner parties with different factions of the gay community in Brisbane. Okay, and they, they gave them money to have these dinner parties, and they went in and they collected the data. Yeah. <laughs> Because the there, there were groups of hard to reach people. Who, yeah. it, you know, you, you think Australia is very forward looking, but actually it's a very difficult place to live, particularly Queensland. If you want. And there were different kind of gay groups too. Yeah. That, and they recognised that, so that's, they took that approach. They collected the data, they employed a theatre company and researchers to transfer the data into a piece of theatre, in fact, into a cabaret. Yeah? And they gave the data as a cabaret back to the source where they got the data in order to validate it. They bust them in to a secret location and they, they had a cabaret. Yeah. And that was a perfect example of how you can validate the data that you collect. Yeah. What was the name of that? We've got a contact for oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Just contact us and we'll try and get, okay. get you the contact. Yeah. Okay. We're still trying to get that funding. We're still kind of trying to get the bloody report off them. <laughs> but a, a, an, excellent piece, an excellent piece of research tucked away in this conference somewhere in Australia that we were at on, on arts and health. Um, and I think it's, it's a superb example of how, you, how the data real, and the responsibility of the researcher is essentially to the primary source yeah, mm-hmm. and not to the data itself. Mm-hmm. That group, that interaction with the primary source, did it influence the final product of yes. the research? Did it change or...? Yes, of course it did. Of course it changed. It also meant that the researchers and the theatre, and we've got some experience of this with the HELP project, it ch- you, you have to challenge the assumptions that you've made because somebody might say, I don't know, you know, that, that isn't say, how yeah. it is, actually. You, and then, then you can work on that bit. And, so it's, it's and the other thing, thing is that you don't expect it to change immediately. Because it doesn't, especially using narrative and stories in that context. We live, the, the normative thing in our society is that we are outcome led, okay? So you achieve your outcome, you evidence, and um, you, you met, you met your targets, okay? And, 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 and the pressure's it. off, okay? Using theatre and stories and everything else, apart from that, is much more long burned, you know? Real cultural change and behavioural change takes a long time to establish. Yeah, and it's a bit like the develop process that you go through in terms of your devising process, because you've just reached the first stage really in both of the things that you did. You could spend another two weeks really finely tuning and going into the detail of what the cultural differences are and what the voices of the subject, which you've objectified, is too. And you can get lots more mileage out of that to create a really robust piece of theatre that you know that 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 communicates much more effectively than it did. Um, and you have to remember that, that it's, it's a long, long burn, and that when you're doing your research and you're sending in your report and you're using theatre, you have to say, it might be effective and powerful in the moment, mm-hmm. but somewhere down the line, someone's going to say, ah, oh, well, it was only a piece of theatre, it was only a piece of entertainment, yeah? Mm-hmm. Or this report isn't robust enough, it's flawed with an interpretation that I don't particularly agree with. Yeah? And the only way that you can protect yourself is to have that validation either from the primary source behind you, yeah, and to see that you've tested it. Okay. And I think the key thing is to say why you're interested in X, Y, Z. What yeah. what is it that, that's informed your choices? Because that's that's who am I? Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's the who am I question that you're answering. And people were not usually interested in that, but it's, you're begging it into your research yeah. because it's an integral part of why you made the decision in the first place. Yes, exactly. Often try to be removed. Um, yeah. Requires a footnote at the yeah. end of the journal. Well, take the eye out, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Great. Right. I just had a thought about what you were saying about uh, doing a theatre piece and then it's done and it's over and then you've got nothing afterwards. And uh, I just recently did some note taking on a marketing lecture. And uh, my marketing is just about making money, but they had a good idea, which was that you've got your event, which for us is a piece of theatre, and to try and make the most of that event with the participants or the audience or whoever, is have a build up to the event, and then after the event you have some continuation. And there, one suggestion was to have like some online activity, and then you've got your real live event, and then you've got some online discussion or online forum. And it's <coughs> quite an idea, but 
Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-